Hello and welcome to Mr. E's Watch Reviews. Today we're going to be doing the full review on the San Martin SN015G GMT on the Jubilee. Uh, this is the Pepsi. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, this is actually still running the 6460 hand goose movement. Um, I actually really like that movement. Uh, it seems to work and run quite well. Um, we'll go ahead and undo the crown here. Uh, for the most part, this feels pretty decent. Not too bad. The winding action is very smooth and silky. You can barely hear the uh, action of the crown and stem. And you see it's already starting to run. First click out. You rotate it this way, changes the date. You go the opposite direction, it changes the GMT hand. And it looks like it does jump, kind of, kind of. But this is a really, really good looking watch, especially for the money. It's, it's well proportioned. The colors are, are pretty bright and vivid. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of wish the red was just a little bit more bold red. Uh, you know, I, I like the blue on it. Um, the yeah, red is not really my favorite color, but I don't know. I, I just wish it was a little bit more fire engine red. But again, it's on ceramic, so I guess that's about as red as they could get it. Um, the bracelet on this one feels really, really good like it it feels right nice pretty pretty silky up and down you know like i said I, I don't really feel any sharp edges uh again you can feel the transition of you know the different types of links and stuff like that uh but yeah i don't feel any sharp edges there uh you know the cut on the case here uh on the edge is nice and straight it's I don't know it's not it's not real sharp or anything like that uh like i don't think you would be able to cut no paper or anything they may want to try and bevel that edge it's just i have seen a couple of watches that do have a beveled edge there uh and i do like that um but again the way the case back is and how it sits that'll actually you know keep it up off your wrist just a little bit but so back to what we were doing earlier I'm just going to push this back in and screw that crown back down there we go so again the crown action uh right nice right decent um you get the double pusher uh clasp nice mode clasp and i've actually really grown to like the san martin clasp um uh, i wish it had an on the fly adjustment that's my only thing um but you know for what it is uh the micro adjust gets it done um you know my biggest complaint about this watch uh is the bezel is just a little tight um but you can hear the clicks are very positive and i mean it, it takes a good bit of force to make this thing move um you know it's not like impossible to move but in comparison to like my other uh gmt's you know from san martin that are bi-directional um you know uh i actually like the faux patina one better as far as the bezel action goes uh, you know they're both on the jubilee and all that kind of good stuff but that one doesn't have a date and i really like a date in cyclops um you know the end links fit to the case exceptionally well i mean just really really good uh you know all in all like i really like this watch let's do all the dimensions real fast all right without the cyclops is 13.2 with the cyclops 14.3 uh, let's see north to south as the bombardier says uh let's see 
Hang on, I gotta touch the screen so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Come on, yep. North to south was 47.8, 47.7. Now, with the way the end links are, it's actually at a straight 50. Uh, this is a think of 40 and a half. Well, it's supposed to be a 40 and a half case. It's 40.1 on the bezel. The case is measuring, you know, right around that 40 and a half mark. 40.7. I don't know, it depends. Hang on. Yeah. Close, we're we're going to say close enough to 40 and a half. We're not going to split hairs on this. Uh, the bracelet does actually have a taper. Um, it starts off at, what, 19.6 uh, millimeters and tapers down to a slim 15.7 and then goes back up to 18.2 on the clasp. Um, again, nice sterile case back. Uh, Sign logo on a crown, which I do like that hexagon logo. That is pretty cool looking. Uh, I have seen the other ones that have got like where it's written San Martin in cursive, which I think that's actually pretty dope and classy looking too. Um, the polish work and everything on the case is very, very nice. I looked at this at under, underneath of the microscope uh, and it, it actually looked right good. You know, I, I couldn't hardly see any the the CND marks and stuff like that. Um, this is a pretty slick watch. I mean, you know, it it's it's very very sharp looking. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go grab one of the, or the actual my other two San Martin GMTs. And we'll do a comparison between all three, and I'm gonna grab the two Jess. All right, hang on. Okay, so as you guys can see, we got a whole bunch here. Uh, so basically, this is also the SN015G, um, but this is the no day or no Cyclops, and it has. Hang on a second, let me pull it up. Grab it. I don't want to lose my spring bars. This is the bracelet it comes with. Uh, it's a nice oyster bracelet with polished center links, um, fold over safety with double pusher clasp, uh, nice milled clasp. Um, I really like this bracelet. It's actually very well made. Um, I was just trying some different stuff with uh, this one. You know, I just, I don't know. I wanted to try the bracelet on this one. You know, it, it looks okay uh not 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 the biggest fan but so okay the big differences between these two uh is a this has got a unidirectional bezel this has got a bi-directional this comes on the oyster this comes on the jubilee uh cyclops no cyclops um you want this one okay so yeah get this one if you're going San Martin. Yeah, screw this one. Uh, both of these got loomed bezels, which very cool. And the 120 degree or 120 click uh, bezel on this is super tight and nice and smooth. Uh, so it's like no points deducted really for the unidirectional bezel, but the bi-directional is much more functional for the GMT uh, purposes. Um, like trying to do it with the unidirectional you can do it but it's a pain in the ass like it is really difficult like lots of math uh, i would suggest being you know of, of some kind of uh mathematical genius descent um so again between the two options go this one and like i said you guys can tell i've worn this one uh but like the numbers and letters and whatnot, like, I don't know, they just kind of got this brownish look to them. And, I don't know, maybe it's kind of silver, but I like the way the white ones stand out better. Um, that and the Jubilee bracelet is more comfortable, you know. Uh, so, definitely excited about this one going to its new home. Uh, 
it's actually going to where it was supposed to go but here's what i wanted to compare to these two um like this one the the bezel is actually easier to grip for some reason uh this one the the bezel is kind of more of a worn down kind of a look and it's uh a lot closer or a lot thinner to the, the actual case uh <clears throat> Like grabbing this one, it's easier to grab it here on the sides, but this one glides better between the clicks. Again, the positive, the clicks are very positive. So essentially that's why I like this one better. And I cannot remember which model number this one is, um, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, like I, I really, I prefer this one as far as the bezel action over this one and it's not like this one is just really stiff this one's kind of stiff but this one's really stiff but this one's easier to grab than this one so six half dozen one or the other but again both fully loomed gmt bezels super badass super super badass uh again all of these watches are running all the same movement uh this one is the suges uh out of all of them this one is my absolute favorite because the bezel action um you know it's a nice cut bezel not too deep but nice enough you know what i mean uh but at any rate the bezel action is very smooth it does lock in place uh so like that and again this one the case the fitment the bracelet this thing is just really super badass like yeah so you know between all of these um if you're on alley i would suggest go this route uh however this watch is excellently made like, I really don't, and again, this is just a personal thing when I'm telling you, like, I I really like this one just because it is super close to the Rolex. It just, it feels the most like the Rolex. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, if that's not what you're looking for, you know, you just want to look and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this one and this one is perfect. And like I said, these two, I really like the, the vintage, you know, feel on this one. But like I said, this one here is just so badass. It really is. And let's go ahead and do a loom shot on all these. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and unstrap this so I can lay it flat. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that light off. Hang on a second. All right, let's turn that one off. Let's see. So as you can see, the Sujis is the only one that does not have a loomed bezel. However, the loom is nice and bright. The faux patina. Again, nice and bright. Sorry the GoPro isn't picking it up that good. I got fucking luminescence going off everywhere. And this one, like I said, the loom is actually quite a bit better than its sister here. Oh, well, I guess the sister was on its side. So I, I tell you what, hang on a second. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll go ahead and we're gonna supercharge everybody. Show you all his full potentials. There we go. That's much better. That's a much better. So, 
This is the bi or the unidirectional bezel. Again, the bezel in person, uh, you can read it quite well. The camera's not picking the bezel up all that great. Um, and the dial and hands, very, very legible. Uh, this one, the one that's going to its new home, uh, super legible. Like you can read that very clearly, it's very bright. The whole bezel, very nice. Uh, same thing with the faux patina. Again, to the camera, it's having a hard time picking up the bezel because the entire bezel is lit up. It looks like a uh, big light Cerachrome, but very, very visible. Like this just looks so fucking cool. I, I really love the faux patina on this one. Like this one's just very dope. But again, the Sujis, much like the Rolex does not have the loomed bezel. And like I said, this one, you know, loom is very nice and bright. You can see it very well. Uh, again, I'm not exactly sure how well the GoPro is doing with picking up all this stuff. Um, I normally use my phone for all this kind of shit. But, like, here, here you go, hold on. Where, where, where's it at? See, it's not even picking up that one. Well, damn it. I mean, let me hit it with a little bit of the, the light. Because, I mean, I can see it plainly with my eyes, but, you know, the camera's not picking it up good. Pick it up now. Holy shit, what the hell's wrong with you, camera? Okay. Sorry, guys, the screen went black on me. I fucking didn't realize. So you probably could have seen it the last time and it was just the screen was black and I'm a dumb dumb. Again, that's one of the reasons why I hate using the GoPro because, you know, it just turns on and off on me like that and I gotta kinda guess what's what's on the screen and what's not on the screen. You know, I don't like that. I like being able to see what I'm doing. Um, so, at any rate, I would definitely pick this SN015 over this one. Um, not because of the bezel color, but just because, you know, the Jubilee, Cyclops, and the bi-directional bezel. Um, you know, the double pusher clasp, I have this on like multiple, multiple, multiple San Martin watches, and it is very, very functional. It works great. Um, uh, I don't have this one sized up to my wrist. Um, and again, just so y'all can see, I'm wearing my Sujis, uh, Seaman. It's the semen. I did not realize that was the name of this fucking watch until after I did the review. Yeah. But I really like this watch too. This watch is badass. Like it is really dope. It is super, super awesome. So very impressed, impressed with all the Sujis watches that I own. Uh, but we'll go ahead and slide this one on for y'all. Um, and I, 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 I don't know, I might be wrong, but like this one might be an SNO152, but um, I don't think so. But like you guys can just see these watches fit great. I mean, it just, the K shape design, lug width, everything. And, you know, like I said, I got a, I say I got a small wrist, but it's a seven inch wrist. And there's people with a whole lot smaller wrist than that. Um, I, you know, the San Martins will definitely accommodate. Uh, may have to take out a couple of the permanent links or something though, but you, you can get you can get it down small enough if need be. But I really like their their watches. Everything I've gotten from them has been pretty much pretty top notch. I mean, you know, there are a few little small quality control air uh, issues here and there. But overall, their stuff is pretty badass. Um, at any rate, uh, I need y'all to like and subscribe. Um, I'll put a link down and below, you know, uh, where you can get this one. And like I said, if, if you message them and whatnot, they might give you a little discount if you tell them that you're a viewer of mine and that I sent you. Uh, but you got to send it through the messages and be patient and all that kind of good jazz. But at any rate, um, you know, anytime you save money, it's worth a little bit of patience. Uh, but at any rate, um, 
I do appreciate y'all's time. You know, check out the next watch that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a review on the other San Martin that I got, the Chronograph. And we're gonna compare that to the Sujess uh, Chronograph also. And see, just so y'all can see, this is what I was wearing the other day. So, you know, like at the shop, I really love this one. This one has become one of my absolute favorites. I did not think I would love the 36 millimeter like I do, but man, this thing hides all the scratches. Like I've done worn this dressy ass watch at the shop. And like I said, it hides all the scratches. The Jubilee is my friend. You know, it's just so comfortable. Yeah. So I definitely love me some San Martin. So I think at this point I own more San Martin watches than any other brand. Uh, you know, which I guess, I don't know, kind of says something about me, but I don't know. I, I really like all these watches that I get from China and whatnot. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're saying that. But man, fuck that, dude. Like these watches are badass. Anybody that tries to say that they're not, well, I don't know what kind of stick up is up their ass. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just being snobs or whatever, but you know, like, is everything always 100% perfect with every last one of them? No, but friggin' it's not that way for any fucking watch. You know what I'm saying? It just, you know, like for example, if you got a piece of shit Rolex from Rolex, you know what I'm saying? A Rolex is gonna like smooth that over and really kiss your ass more than likely, especially if it is actually really fucked up. But they'll probably be like, well, fucking go tell everybody, bitch. Fucking ain't nobody gonna believe you. You know, and I mean, it just uh, not not only that, but you know, if you was the idiot that spent a ton of money on buying a Rolex that was a piece of shit, you gonna feel like a dumbass. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you might not want to be bringing that up to everybody and go and talking about it to you know people and shit. So. You get what I'm saying? Like, there, there's there's multiple different ways of looking at all that kind of stuff. But uh, for the money I've spent, I have got all the different kinds of varieties and looks and feels of watches that I like. And I love wearing all of them. So, yeah. Uh, at any rate, um, again, thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe. Subscribe more than anything and share this video. It's... Uh, Let's put the screws to YouTube. I want to make some dough. All right? Later.